Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. On this channel we talk books and today I am filming a video that I've only ever done once before and it's a try a chapter video. So I have just picked up, I say just, like a couple of weeks ago, picked up this stack of books from a library that I borrow from and I need to return them. <laughs> um, the reason that I've picked these books up from the library is because they're books that I have put into my um, my wish list for books. Can't remember why, can't remember who recommended them to me, but obviously at some point I've heard somebody talking about these books and they have, you know, been in my on my radar enough that I've put them onto my wish list. So I have no idea why they're there, can't remember the plot, can't remember why they've been included, but I thought, you know what? Instead of buying these books, I'm going to borrow them from the library, try a chapter, maybe two, and see how I go. See if it's something that I can get behind. See if it's something that I do want to keep reading. Or if after a chapter or so, I'm just feeling a bit meh about it. And if so, back to the library. No money spent. Everyone wins. <laughs> Okay, so, and I'm going to share this journey with you. So hopefully um, you are ready to hear about these books. Uh, I will not go through them one at a time and then go into them. I'm just going to start. We're going to, we're going to get started. So the first one on the top of the pile is Drifts by Natasha Burge. I'll read you the first line. I will read the first chapter and I'll come back and I will share my thoughts. Uh, so, chapter one. An editor suggests I write about being an alien. Okay, well, this book really uh, shifted my mood really quickly. It's the kind of book it seems that you can you need to be in the right headspace for because the language is super poetic, and the um, the concepts that are covered are definitely like up here, not based normal human level so you need to be in the headspace for that but it seems really interesting so far the chapters are super super short so I actually ended up reading two of them and it was a page and a half so um, really interesting beginning um, and I'm intrigued so I think this is something that I will potentially go on with but again I feel like I would need to be in the right headspace for so um, Drifts by Natasha Bird you're going into the maybe borrow again pile let's go to the second one uh, this book is of women and salt a novel by gabriella garcia um so let me give it a, ch a chapter a try and then i will come back and i will chat with you so first of all let me read the first line to you oh it has a contents page does that mean these are short stories no there's also a uh, family tree. Carmen, Miami, 2018. Jeanette, tell me that you want to live. This was really interesting. I really enjoyed the first uh, chapter and a bit. So um, it begins with, as I said, who was the name of the character? Carmen. And if you look at the family tree, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see, Carmen is here and she's talking about Jeanette, um, who is her daughter. And then the, so it's sort of like a prologue. And then the next chapter, we go to uh, Marie, Maria Isabel's story. Um, and she is rolling cigars in a factory in Cuba. So clearly this is, uh, we're, we're heading right back down the, uh, the, family tree um, of Jeanette and Carmen. Um, so yeah, this was really interesting and I definitely felt very intrigued by the first chapter and a bit. Um, and I definitely would like to, oh, cat, sorry. Hello, Xanthi. <laughs> so yeah, this is definitely a book that I would like to continue reading. So this is definitely going on the yes pile. Um, I am really intrigued by this. It seems like it's going to be a book about um, women in a Cuban family. Um, and it looks like the, you know, current generations have um, 
immigrated to I'm assuming the US um, and then we're sort of like exploring the family tree and, and how things have changed and what stayed the same uh, for women throughout the generation so this sounds sounds like a really really interesting book and I am very interested in reading that one all right let's move on to the third book now from my stack and that is Mullumbimbi by Melissa Lukashenko um, I have read a Melissa Lukashenko book called Too Much Lip. It's a book that I've very much enjoyed. I've actually read it twice and um, I think she's a great um, Australian Aboriginal author um, and so I'm expecting good things from this but I don't know if the first chapter of this book is going to give um, in the same way that the previous two have. So let's check it out. Uh, so Malambimbi. Let's see what it's all about. It is a truth universally acknowledged, reflected Joe, that a teenager armed with a Nico pen is a pain in the effing neck. And if it isn't, then it effing well ought to be. <laughs> oh, I love you, Melissa Lukashenko. All right, let me read this chapter and I will get back to you. Okay, I didn't actually finish reading the chapter because I already know that I want to read this book. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, so we started with a character mowing the lawn of the cemetery where she lives and works. Um, and she uh, seems like an amazing character. The book sounds really interesting. It's full of all of the amazing uh, dialogue and interest that Melissa Lukashenko uh, is associated with in my head at least um, I definitely want to read this one so this is on the definite pile as well Whew, okay four pages in the first chapter was 17 pages so I and I already knew I already knew <laughs> I don't need to read the whole thing I know I'm gonna read that one okay the next one is the islands by Emily Brugman uh, let's check it out and see what we think oh we love a map it starts with a map okay Looks like we are looking at a group of islands off the coast of Western Australia, according to this map. So, part one is called West. Crayfish. The islands were a day's boat ride west of the mainland. Not very intriguing so far, but informative. Let's see how the chapter progresses. Okay, this one I am not sure is for me. Um, so... Basically, we start off with um, hearing that somebody, uh, so let me go back. This is a book about uh, Finnish migrants in the 1950s, um, and they have sort of set up a community, I guess, uh, on the islands um, doing crayfishing, which is sort of a, a job, I guess, that not everybody wants to do. So they... Um, we find uh, the main character at the very beginning of the story has just been informed that his brother, who is a crayfisher, has been lost at sea. Um, and he is uh, working in the mines on the mainland. He comes out and he heads out to try and look for his brother. I read a little bit into it and the pacing just seems a little bit slow for me. Um, I'm sure it's potentially going to be an interesting story but it didn't really grab me so I think this one I'm going to just send back to the library but let me know um, if this is one that you've read and you would recommend um, and I might revisit it again in the future but for now this one's heading back to the library all right let's have a look at the next one ah this is a bit of a genre change um, so this one is God Killer by Hannah Kainer um, the cover of this one is absolutely stunning um, and I'm interested in this one. I think uh, this is going to be a little bit more of a fantasy. Um, so I might actually read the back for this one before to you before I read the first line. You are not welcome here, God Killer. Kisson's family were killed by zealots of a fire god. Now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. That is, until she finds a god she cannot kill. Skel Skeddy, a god of white lies, has somehow bound himself to a young noble, and they are both on the run from unknown assassins. 
Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to the ruined city of Blen Blenradin, where the last of the wild gods reside, to each beg a favour. Pursued by demons and in the midst of burgeoning civil war, they will all face a reckoning. Something is rotting at the heart of the kingdom, and only they can be the ones to stop it. So that's the brief synopsis. Oh, what a stunning map. That is a really positive start shall we say um, because that map is really beautiful all right so we start with a prologue that goes for quite some time so I'm going to count that as chapter one uh, so the first line of the prologue it says 15 years ago her father fell in love with a god of the sea Okay, this was interesting. <laughs> um, so we are following uh, Kissen, who at, in the prologue is a young girl. Um, her family are sort of blessed by the sea god, but the tides are sort of, the tides are turning. Oh my lord, uh, <laughs> the tides are turning, um, and that's not the god in favor there's a fire god that um the townspeople uh have chosen to follow so they sort of sacrifice kissen's family and kissen is supposed to also be sacrificed but um there's a sort of she her father gets well she gets herself free and then her father kind of throws her to the sea um and you know exchanges his life for hers um with the promise of uh, with in a promise with this sea god so that's sort of the the prologue um and then we move into the first chapter which i sort of just read the first couple of lines of and um kissen i'm assuming is now grown up and is a god killer so yeah interesting um i don't know if it's going to be for me or not i was definitely um you know feeling very compelled by this first chapter this prologue um so yeah i don't know this is possibly something that i will come back to at some point but i don't know if it's a for now book i'm not as excited about this one as i was about the others but i feel like it would probably be a pretty quick read so um because of it was so compelling and there was a lot of action and so on so for the other chapters kind of keep up that pace this would be a very um engaging read so might be for somebody else but i'm not sure if it's going to be for me uh, okay, we've got two more to go. Uh, this one is called Poster Girl by Veronica Roth. Um, and the cover is gorgeous. Um, so, yeah, that's something going for it. Let's have a look at the first chapter. When she thinks of the time before, she thinks of the photo shoot. Okay. Let's read and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, I decided to stop reading. Um, I read about four pages of the book and uh, something in the writing style just wasn't gelling for me. So, so you know, it wasn't um, probably with a little bit more time I would, would kind of get into it. But, um, yeah, it just wasn't gelling for me. So at this point in time I'm going to DNF this one. Um, essentially this book is beginning with a character um, who has been what I'm guessing is a, a, the model for a poster that was used as propaganda um, and you know she the first little bit of the chapter is her remembering back to um, uh, the taking of the photograph uh, and then it goes into sort of the present day and it was so that first little bit was interesting um, and had a few intriguing things in it, but then it went into the sort of present day and I just lost interest. So um, unfortunately this one's a no go for me, but it might be for you. So it could be one to look out for if, um, you know, that sort of idea sounds interesting to you. Okay. Last one. <laughs> this one is small pleasures by Claire Chambers. From memory, I feel like this may have been a former Woman's Prize shortlist or longlist book, um, and that's potentially why it's on my um, TBR, or my, not my TBR, sorry, my wish list. Um, so I'm going to get in, have a look at this one and see what I think, um, and then I will let you know. So let's have a look at the first chapter. Um, it actually begins with a... Uh, 
looks like a newspaper clipping saying rail disaster rush hour trains collide in thick fog many dead um so i will read that one but i'll read um the first line to you from chapter one where it says june 1957 the article that started it all was not even on the front page but was just a filler on page five between an ad advertisement for the Patricia Brixie Dancing School and a report on the AGM of the Crofton North Liberals. Okay. Okay, this one was uh, very uh, evocative of place and time, um, and it was something that I think I would really like to keep reading. So um, we begin this book with a character called Jean, who is a reporter at a local paper. She's the only woman on staff. It's 1957, um, and a story has sort of just fallen into her lap, um, which is about a woman who believes that her daughter was conceived immaculately um, and she as the only woman on staff has been assigned this task to uh, interview this woman and see if there's some kind of you know interesting story there that could be reported on so that's what she does she um and we don't we haven't yet heard about any further about the story but that's sort of like the beginning of of where uh, where things start and then we sort of see what Jean's life is like she lives with her mother um and so you know sort of uh s establishing that setting and establishing the family dynamics and what life is like for Jean um and what it's like for her in the uh newsroom and so on so sounded really interesting and um the writing style suited me so I think I will continue with this one. So that was the last of my stack. So let's review, shall we? <laughs> uh, the four books that I'm going to sort of continue with, maybe not immediately, but at some point, I think are uh, Drifts, although this one was is very mood, um, mood based, I think, because of the style of the writing. It's very um, poetic and, and very um, highbrow, so I'd have to be in the right headspace to read this one. So that's Drifts by Natasha Birch. Um, I'm also going to continue with Of Women and Salt by Gabriella Garcia. Malamimbi by Melissa Lukashenko and Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. The three that I'm not going to continue with at this time <laughs> are The Islands um, by Emily Brugman. And unless somebody has some very strong feelings in the comments, um, I probably won't pick this one back up again. Uh, Poster Girl, I so think I feel similarly about by Veronica Roth I don't think is going to be for me um God Killer I probably possibly will come back to by Hannah Kaner um when I'm in the mood for fantasy um and you know a sort of rollicking good time um which happens from time to time so <laughs> um potentially I will come back to this one but this one I think can go back to the library so that's that I hope you've enjoyed this video um, it's not something that I've done super often this is only the second time I've done a try a chapter video um, but hopefully it was interesting let me know down in the comments if you've read any of the books that I tried a chapter of um, are there any that you think I should move up my TBR um, and read sooner rather than later uh, are there any that I should just definitely buy my own copy of <laughs> because I know I'm gonna love them um, or you think I'm gonna love them please let me know down in the comments um, also if you think I need to reconsider any of the three that I'm going to just be sending back to the library let me know as well thanks for watching guys and I will catch you on the next one bye